Welcome to Dynamite the Lot. We had a good show. And um, I got to say this. When you see this show, you wonder, the build going into Revolution is pretty damn good. What else are they going to throw at it? Are they going to add in more from New Japan Pro Wrestling or Impact Wrestling? That's a question I pose to you guys. Tell me below. Do you believe more Impact is going to show up? Or do you believe that there's going to be more New Japan? To be honest, I think New Japan Pro Wrestling is going to be superseding Impact the way they've been booking so far. It just looks like it. I don't see anything more than what they're showing. Now, Matt. Money Matt with the Page versus Hybrid 2. Now, here's the thing, guys. I don't hate Hybrid 2. TH2 is a good team. But the problem here was they were a bit, they, they were a little botchy. Wasn't a lot of botches. There was some botches and they didn't look good. And it did look very choreographed. A good team. Understand, I'm not talking about years past, 30, 40 years past. I'm talking about recent teams. There are some teams out there that understand how not to make it look so choreographed. To make it very spontaneous. But to make sure that the partner they're working with or partners do not get hurt. TH2 doesn't do that. They are spots upon spots upon spots. And the major issue there is that when you do your spots, two problems. One, if you have no pauses within your spot to let, your, let the fans really soak it in, it really doesn't mean much. But two, when you make it so choreographed, it looks fake. That's what a lot of pro wrestlers don't understand these days. You can say a lot about the past. You can, and obviously you can, because there was a lot of stuff that looked really bad. But there was a point in the middle to the beginning of 2000s where people were understanding you can make it look real, but not too choreographed. And unfortunately, we gone away from that. It's very choreographed, and it looks bad sometimes. And TH2, that's how it looked. Now, I didn't expect the match to go any different than what it was. It was obvious that Matt was going to get the tag on a Adam Page. And Adam Page let it happen. And Matt wins. And he's so happy. He grabs the mic and says. Here he is. Ladies and gentlemen. Adam Hangman Page. I'm so glad we signed together. And I'm so glad that you're going to be making millions upon millions of dollars. And I get 30% of it. And then Hangman comes up to him. Grabs the mic. Well not grabs. He asks for it. And Matt gets his own. And he says. Well I'm glad you're enjoying this. But um. You know, with that contract, you know you should have thought about looking at it. You did look at it, right? He says, no, no, I just had sent it right off to the lawyers. I said, well, I know because I got someone coming to, to present it to you because I think you should look at it. And it's a guy in a suit. And that guy in a suit hands Money Matt the contract, which pretty much states it's not a contract to become one of his... <laughs> Pretty much, he didn't sign him. He didn't sign with him. He signed for a match at, at Revolution. And at Revolution, if Matt loses, he loses 100% of the quarterly earnings he has so far in 2021. Which, technically speaking, if you're going to be honest here, with going into the ring, with the Mercer coming out, and any other endorsements you get, that could be a bit of good hunk of change in real life. That could be like five or $10,000. I could be wrong because I don't know how the business side of wrestling is. I don't want to know. But if you're going to talk about getting paid to go in the ring, of course, you're getting paid. Getting the merchandise, you're going to get merchandise. You're getting some of that money at the merch. Of course, AEW takes their cut, but you get some of that merch. And then your own brand that you have outside of AEW, you get a good amount of change. It could be up to five, ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000. Within the first month or two of you being in this year. So he wants all of it. Along with what's going to go on when Revolution comes up. So from January until Revolution, he could take up to about ten to fifteen or twenty thousand dollars of their money or more. You never know. He gets mad, Matt. He says, How dare you? But you know what? Okay, okay. I was trying to help you, but okay, you want to be like this? Fine. We can do this, but if you're an honorable man, you would do the same. 
If I got to give up 100% of my quarterly earnings for this year, so do you. And he says, fine. At Revolution, we'll do it. And then you, I believe it was Cassidy, not Quinn. It was Cassidy who came out in that suit and then whooped the ass up a little bit of Hangman Page. And guess what happened? With a little bit of backup by the Dark Order, he fights him off. It's really becoming more and more apparent that you're going to have Hangman Page join the Dark Order. Now, only thing I would say is this. If Hangman Page does join the Dark Order, finally, the stuff that goes on in being, being the Elite, I've seen a couple of things when it came to Brody Lee after his passing, unfortunately, because I never used to watch Being the Elite. But I, when they talked about it, I thought I should at least see what they were talking about, and it was funny stuff. So if they're going to take some of that BD Leaf stuff, they should throw it onto a segment and Dynamite showing the interaction between those two, those the, between Hammond Page and Silver, Reynolds, Evil Uno, and everyone else. That's what I wish they'd do along with Negative One because he was there as well. Along with 10, everybody. Now, the women's world elimination. Hmm. The round one here, having Serena Deeps and Riho, we haven't seen her in quite a while. We have not seen Riho in a while, almost 10 months since last year because she couldn't leave Japan. She couldn't go anywhere. She was stuck in Japan. Yes, yeah, she worked there, but she couldn't come to America. Now she's back. And I'm sorry, guys. Anyone who likes Riho, look, I'm sure she's a great wrestler. And guess what? She is a great wrestler. But she has no personality because they've given it none. And it can't just be because she can't speak English. There are ways to get a wrestler over no matter if they speak English or not. And they haven't done it. So when I remember Riho when she became champion, which I believe she should have never became champ, it should have been either Awesome Kong or Nia Rose. I'm sorry. I'd rather see Awesome Kong because she had the experience, but she never got the title. And if it had to be Nia Rose, it should have been Nia Rose, even though she's still green herself. It should have been Nia, and everyone had to fight Nia to get that title, and it would have been better. As it came down to it, Rio just didn't feel credible because she had no personality. We knew nothing of her. And that's where I feel this match was coming from. I still don't feel anything for Rio. Mind you, she's a beautiful woman. She's 24 or 25 years old. She's been doing this since she was about 11 or 12 years old, I believe. I can't remember how long she's been doing it. And she has ability. She's skilled. But she has no personality built in America. Yes, she has a personality and a character in Japan. But not here. And that's the problem. Nothing. So even though this was a good match. It was. It was a good match. And supposedly, I do believe that either Deeps actually has an injury. Or she's hamming it up a lot more than it should be. She loses this match. Which is understandable. She's holding the NWA title. I don't think Tony Khan wants a NWA star. Holding an AEW title without a contract. If she had a contract from both companies. That's a different entirely situation. A different situation entirely. She can have that if Tony Khan and Billy Corgan are willing to make some type of arrangement with each other. But she doesn't, so she's going to lose, no problem. But I do not buy Rio, particularly if they're going where I think they're going. I could be wrong, you guys, tell me below. Now, we had, why not? We had a segment where they showed a little bit of Shaq and a little bit of Jade playing basketball. Her running around. Where the hell is the work in the ring? Here's the problem, guys, for me, when it comes to Jade Carbill. I'm not against her. The woman is like a goddess. She's beautiful. She's thick. Of course, you love them thick. Who doesn't? The most of the time. Look, I had I had one. Actually, I had two. My ex-wife, she was very curvy but not thick. The last girlfriend I was with, she was very thick. But I only cared about them. I didn't care about their damn bodies that much. I mean, you know, I mean, there's only so much you can do with the same body and then you're going to have to deal with that person after you had your fun with the body. I care about the person before I cared about jumping into the bed with the person. 
That's just how it was. But, I can't believe I said that again. I'm <laughs> sorry. But look, seeing Jay Carbill doing basketball stuff with Shaq means nothing. I want to see her in the freaking ring. I've seen her lift weights. Good. But seeing her going into the court and playing basketball, not good. Not good. I would have liked to see Shaq show something like he'd been working in the ring. And like she's been doing some work helping him in the ring. Just, that's just me, guys. Tell me below. The, hmm, Team Taz segment. Because they're about to do the, soon, that street fight. And they tried to add on to what happened last week. They call it the Sting. He comes out with a bat. And they're saying, you are lucky that you have that bat. Because if you didn't have that bat, you wouldn't stand a chance. And Sting decides... To throw the bat down. And you have Hook. You got. You don't have Hobbs there. And you don't have Starks there. Because of the storms that's been going on. Pretty much. Cage wipes out Sting. 100%. Which you know what? It's a fine thing. Hopefully Sting's alright. Because he got power bomb out of his damn boots. That was a big ass power bomb. So I'm hoping that Sting is okay. I mean, the guy is 62 or 63. It's not like he can't still go in the ring. Look, the Rock and Roll Express was still working. They were working. They weren't perfect in the ring, but they were able to take bumps. So hopefully Sting is able to take his bump. He's perfectly all right. And this is going to set up pretty well for the street fight. But I'm wondering, what is this street fight going straight? I am... Very intrigued. Look. Look, guys. When it comes to the Undertaker and AJ Styles, that was the best you could have done cinematically. It was good. Yes, there was major issues, particularly with the lighting. The lighting angered my ass off beyond no end. But it was still a good cinematic match. It was. Here, the question is going to be, will they understand what the needs of Sting are? That's going to be the question for me personally. You guys tell me below. Now, um, hmm. Let's do this now. Santana Ortiz versus the Bucks. The Bucks. The Bucks. The Bucks. The, ah, the Bucks. <laughs> I ain't playing. I ain't, I ain't doing this over. You have seen me botch my ass off with the new camera, with the new audio. And I'm very, I like to say for the ones who saw this, thank you very much that you said that. The camera seemed to be good, and the audio seemed to be good. I did I bring up the audio a little bit, because it was a little low, but I'm glad it was heard, and it was audible. And Andre, I love you, man. If you like my older camera, I'm going to probably still switch back and forth with this, so you will see me in my old camera with bad autofocus eventually, because I'm still working on this. But still, when you see this match, it's something I do believe should have happened earlier when it came to Santana Ortiz. I'm not lying. It should have happened earlier. They should have had this match earlier. Honestly. It was fine. And beforehand, when they had that little interview and they wanted to make it very clear that the inner circle is still together and they're going to be bringing back gold. At least until MJF basically... Open his stupid mouth, wanting to get Sammy Guevara looking bad, and pretty much Chris said, Shut up. I know what you're doing. We watched AEW. We're not dumb, okay? Even though MGF said, You actually think I'm going to record things on camera? Are you stupid? No. Nope. Chris didn't fall for it. He said, Look, who are you kidding? We know you were trying it for weeks, but this isn't the point. No matter even if you were trying or not, you don't leave the inner circle. You do not leave me. And Sammy, you did. And when you leave me, you make the worst mistake. You're dead to me. You're going to pay for it. That's what we got right now when it comes to that situation. And because of MJF, because I'm bringing him up first, because he jumped onto the ramp and he was pissing off the ref, the ref got rid of him along with the inner circle. Gone. They were gone. It was all about the wrestling, which was good. In the end, it was a, I don't think I caught that roll up. I don't think so. 
But it was a roll up. I just why you couldn't just pin him normally. You had to do a freaking roll up. That looked so rehearsed. It was terrible. But in the end, the inner circle comes out. They whoop the ass of the Bucks. And then you see Kenny and the Good Brothers along with Don, the Donnie, the Don Long Kong, whatever you want to call him, is standing there watching on the monitor. And and and, and it's Kenny who said, we got to go out there. He says, no, 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 no. And this Don said, no, no. Do not go out there. Leave it. He says, we can't leave them. And he's trying to get... He's trying to get the Good Brothers to go out, and they do. And Kenny's getting upset because he wants to go out, and he says, no, you're the champ. Leave it. So they don't do anything. By the time the Inner Circle leaves, you get nothing. It's That's how it is. You can see Don is trying to separate him from everything that is his real support system of the elite. Fine. Good. Makes it good. Because this is leading somewhere, hopefully... Helping Impact Wrestling, taking their damn title, and then letting Moose get it back. If anybody think, I'm going to say this right now. I know I, I'm trying not to drag this out. Because I now understand the camera can go up to 30 minutes. My own camera can only go up to 21 minutes and 55 seconds. Or 56. This one go up to 30. So I'm going to be doing this. <laughs> but Kenny needs to take the Impact title. Hold it. Moose must fight to get it back. It really will help Impact. And it will help AEW. I really do believe that. I really do. But I don't know if we're going to get that. I don't think we will. But that's just me. You got some to blow. Now. FTR versus Seidel Brothers. Of Matt and. And. What is it? Matt. Matt and Mike. Actually I've never seen Mike Seidel. Never seen him. So this was the first time watching him work. He's not bad, but if you got to compare the two brothers, one is a little less high-flying and more physical. One is more high-flying and physical. But you know what I mean. One's more physical, one's more high-flying. I think Mike is more physical and Matt is more high-flying. Or you could say either one. They're very, very comparable to each other. It was a good match. No telly there. And in the end, you get FTR defeating a, uh, uh, the, the Seidel bros. I think that's the best way to call them. But then when it looks like Mike seemed to be really wiped out, pretty messed up, you get the doc going in and you get, um, what was it, Dash trying to grab the bag and he did take some scissors and he's going to cut the hair off of a, of a Mike and it is Luchasaurus along with the rest of Jurassic Express coming out. Luchasaurus is money. He's got a new mask. He doesn't have his little horns cut off. You do not. You don't cut off the horns of a Luchasaurus. Luchasaurus is money. You do not mess with him. He really needs to go away from the Jurassic Express eventually. That's how I feel about it. So we will probably get something with Jurassic Express and Telly. And actually we do because they did show it at the end of the show. Telly is getting back in the ring. And it's going to be Jurassic Express versus FTR and Telly. It's going to be interesting. Let's see how bad of shape Telly's in or good of shape Telly is in. It counts. You guys tell me below. Cody and Brandy had their moment because it seems that Cody can't keep his damn mouth shut and Brandy didn't want to tell him what baby they were going to have because you want, she wanted to keep it a secret for a while, but she says Cody opens his damn mouth and he can't keep it closed. So she decided, or maybe Cody decided, said, look, you don't want to reveal it to me right now. Let's do it on air. So he comes out with his lady. And you can see on the Titan Tron, it's a girl. <laughs> Congratulations, Cody. Congratulations, Brandy. You're getting your first baby. And how many months is she? What, five, six months? She's getting there. She's getting, <laughs> that belly's getting big now. Congratulations, though. I mean, look, I'm a dad. At least I do believe I'm a dad. I'm, I'm sure I'm probably a dad. Uh, I'm, I'm a dad. And that first sign of seeing a baby, that, that makes you feel very different. It's the truth. You act very weird afterward. <laughs> That's just me, you guys, send me below. And finally, the six-man tag of Butcher, Blade, 
Kingston versus Archer, Phoenix, and Moxley. Moxley had his moment to talk. I think Moxley as well as Kingston are such good talkers. I love seeing Kingston talk. Actually, for me personally, Kingston is the best talker in the company. He is. Moxley's good, but Kingston just shines more than anyone. If you've seen Being the Elite, he made a story out of a damn, I think, sandwich. A ham sandwich, I think. I can't remember what it was. I think it was a ham sandwich. But he could make a story out of anything you give him. And he is just a great talker. Was this a good match? Hmm. I'll tell you this, it wasn't bad. Seeing Archer do a helo off the top, off the um, ring skirt, onto Butcher and the Blade was very substantial. It was nasty. If it had gone bad, that would have been ugly. Ugly. I wouldn't like to see if it had gone wrong. It wasn't all, it wasn't bad. It was okay. You got Jake Roberts at ringside. But I'll say this. Once the match was over, once the Good Brothers beat the crap out of a Moxley, and that's after he got whacked in the face by Kingston, a nice, good backhand. He got hit hard. But he still managed to win that match. He was done. And now we're going to get, and I, I got to look at this again, an exploding Bob Wire death match. What the fuck is that? They decide to come up with something new. I don't know what that is. Does it mean if you touch the Bob Wire, there's going to be small puff explosives going off on it? I don't know. This is what we got with AEW. A lot of show. I think that might be the title. I'm not sure. But I'll tell you this. I'm interested in seeing what's going to happen next week leading into Revolution. What is going to happen? Will Jade be able to wrestle because we didn't see anything from her? Tell me what you guys think. Have a good day. Have a good night. Peace!